Just the the a lot of the all the one way streets. I hate it. Oh yeah, somebody got shot on Saturday. What? Like just outside our window. What? <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of getting shot outside of windows, welcome back to the Marvel Revisited podcast. You're late, where... Winston. It's seven thirty one. I know. You're Dang late. Dang it. Dang it. Well, Danny's Danny's the one that's really late. He was supposed to be here. But uh, we'll see if he well, shows up. Let's, let's do the over uh, under on when he's going to get here. Okay. I bet he's going to get here after 7.45, but before before a, before a 7.57. What do you think, Eric? <laughs> I think he's going to show up exactly for, for me. Well, my time. So, what would your time be? Seven seven thirty right now. Seven fifty-two. Oh, okay. I think he's not going to show up. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, little miss, space. He's going to miss Spider-Man's first appearance in the Marvel Dude, Revisited uh, podcast. Also, series. also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna talk about him while he's not here because that's the way I do things. Um, he wasn't here for all of Phase Two. So I'm like, all right, let's let's put this into perspective. I'm like, the way we do our lists, it's like, okay, uh, is it better than Winter Soldier? Because Winter Soldier is number one right now. And he could be like, mm, no, I don't think it's better than Winter Soldier. And we're like, you don't get to have an opinion because you didn't, didn't watch, watch it. Winter Soldier. So it's just oh, like, no. <laughs> whatever. By the way, prop, props to you, Eric, man. You got a you got a busy life, and you're still making time yeah, to watch dude. all these movies. We appreciate life. No, it's gonna <laughs> We appreciate you. This is this is really important to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Winston and Eric uh, matching uniforms. Yes, today. yeah. <laughs> green, green. Uh, so well. Anyways, uh, again, uh, welcome back to Marvel Revisited, where we rewatch and rank every MCU movie in order. Of course, joined by my two lovely co-hosts today lovely <laughs> lovely yes uh today what movie are we revisiting eric okay i'm gonna Give try to this straight away. i'm gonna try it away from the mic okay. really belt it out today we 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 visiting <laughs> hey knock it out today we will be revisiting captain america civil war 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 Beautiful man. Nice, Beautiful. not bad. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, War. That... <laughs> <laughs> that one had to like go <sighs> bounce off the wall. What is it again? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> good God. Uh, Captain America: Civil War released May 6, twenty sixteen. Budget of two hundred and fifty million dollars. Has not aged a day. Box office of one point one billion dollars. Of course, more. directed by Anthony and Joe Russo. The Russo Ooh. brothers are back, and they set the standard. It is Dude, I'm back with a vengeance, bro. Yeah. God. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, for sure. Crazy, man. So, Aaron, <clears throat> how many times have you seen Civil War? Did anything change rewatching it? Who are you asking, my friend? Two. I said Eric. This would be my second time. Whoa. So I would love, especially after watching all these movies basically with us and talking to us about it. I remember in the last podcast you said that you liked it, but it wasn't like you weren't super crazy. How do you feel about it now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we talked about it and I said it might have been because I, we had so much going on. There was a lot of people there. So my attention might have been in other places. And after watching it last night, I definitely feel like that was the case because this was a lot better than I remembered it. And uh, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's up there for me now. I'm just like, wow, okay. Some parts were kind of slow for me, but um, they're just, 
tell tell the narrative not everything's got to be action but there's man there's plenty of action in this movie so oh, yeah oh yeah nate how many times have you rewatched it dude i feel bad bro did anything no how many times have you seen it did anything change rewatching it so i saw it in theaters and then i must have seen it like three or four more times since then and then now last uh last night so we're probably sitting at like four or five times and i feel bad i feel like i should honestly have watched this movie more it's that good like this movie deserves the double digit watch it's so and even now watching it it was like i noticed something i didn't see before i noticed something i didn't see before it's so good bro yeah for me um this is definitely in one of my most watched I've watched Guardians a lot just because I went to go see it in theaters a lot. I think I only saw this in theaters twice, but I have gone back and rewatched this movie so many times. Um, Even though by the end of the MCU, I don't think this is going to be, you know, it's two or three or whatever. There's a conversation to be made, though. It's that good. Oh, yeah. That it deserves to be in the conversation. But still, out of the like top five, in my opinion, Marvel movies, I think that this is the most rewatched one out of those top fives. It's also because it's probably the, the oldest. Yeah, yeah. This was the first time where I watched it. I was like, oh my God, the MCU is amazing. It's, it's only, amazing. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And, um, yeah, dude. Just, so I, I just, let's get into it, bro. Let's get started. Dude, Tell me what dude. you got. Uh, like, we could, we could start with importance to MCU, but honestly, dude, I kind of want to go all in and... Let's rank the action sequences, bro. All right, I'm going to start with a banger. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's number one, man. What's crazy is that, like, the big showcase fight at the airport, dude, it's freaking insane. Um, Right now, I'm going to shout out Corridor Crew, and they have a stunt men or stunt coordinator reacts, and they talk about this film specifically a ton. Yep. Could not recommend watching that more. I'm probably going to have Winston link it. I'll, I'll send them just so that you guys can find it because it is, I mean, it's such an amazing fight at the airport. And then when you see how it was built and why th- just why things were done the way they were done. And it's just another one of those films, dude, where it's like so many characters, so many characters, and every single one has their moment. Mm-hmm. Every single one. And, and then there's that one. And then there's the final fight. Between Tony, Steve, and Bucky. And it's like... My God, dude. It's so freaking good, bro. It's just like every freaking hit, you feel it, man. Oh, dude. I I remember I watched this... When I was watching this movie in theaters, I had my... I think it was fiancé at the time? My fiancé next to me. And she was like right where there's that scene where... You know, Iron Man is punching Captain America and the Captain America is throwing blows with Iron Man and then he's just right with the shield and he's about to go down. My wife was like, Oh no, like she could she wanted she couldn't stop watching, but she wanted to cover her face. It's just like that emotion in it is just like so raw and it's just it's oh my god, it is amazing. It's hard, man, because like the fight choreography is better but only because there's so many more characters in the airport fight. But the final fight, it just hits so hard, man. And also... So which one are we going to choose? Well, before that, also shout out to that first opening fight, dude. Like, that's no slouch. It gets, it gets you in the moment. It gets you captivated immediately, you know? And then it's there's, solid, yeah. And then there's, yeah. you know, the banter real quick. You know, it's like, she's like, oh, you know, watching... Uh, looking behind your back should be second nature. And he's like, sounds kind of paranoid to me and everything. Just like, there's so many great dude, lines and, yeah. and every it's again, dude, we'll, we'll get into it. Everybody freaking shines in this film. And yeah. there's so many moments, but like that fight is great. And then also, I mean, there's the whole fight. It's not, I mean, it's, it's a great sequence, dude. When Bucky is going to get captured and Steve is like fighting off black Panther so that he doesn't get captured. Like, that whole like street like under under street fight is freaking amazing and then when bucky escapes it's short but it's like bro i mean who is it hype to see tony with just one iron man hand go hand to hand against the winter soldier bro and then dude when when he grabs when he like 
he has a gun and he goes at him and he shoots him and he just grabs it and then he shoots and he's like it's oh so dang great, bro he means business like he was just about to kill me right there it's like yeah. you can see that expression off and it's so great too <sighs> just to see tony like get some good licks in like tony's mm -hmm. no slouch man mm -mm. and then the girls man like ah, and oh. then freaking keep going <laughs> <laughs> talking Let's about the this girls. whole movie talking about the girls uh black panther i realized that her signature move of like wrapping like herself mm -hmm. around the person and throwing them to the ground her i Kinata. realized in the first opening fight uh when she's in like the like uh, marketplace area she takes two of them down like that so they even double yeah. like you know they make her like no she is getting even better as like a normal yeah. fighter you know yeah dude this is uh it's like Go ahead. Being a wrestling fan growing up, um, <laughs> that, move, that move would be called a Hurricane Rana. Nice. <laughs> She's the master of the Hurricane Rana. Oh, yeah. Whose signature move is that? Uh, a lot of cruiserweight, like lighter weight people will do that. But like, um, uh, Would Rey Mysterio do that? Were you Rey around Ma for Rey Mysterio would do that. Nice. Oh, dude. <laughs> dude, the fighting alone. <laughs> Dude, I just, I want to talk about everything all at once, but we have to, so, okay, if I'm voting which fight scene we're going to talk about, um, I vote for the fat final one. Um, I just think it just hits so hard and just freaking that final, final sequence where it's freaking Tony and Steve and Bucky just going at it and then freaking Bucky gets his arm blown off. Stevie's beating the crap out of Tony. He then freaking analyzes the fight. He's then beating the crap out of Steve. And then, in my opinion, we get the most meaningful, I can do this all day, the mm. most meaningful one. Kind of becomes a joke after this. And then we get freaking Steve just, like, almost mur murdering him because of the help of Bucky. It's just, like, yeah. perfect fight. Uh, I, I feel perfect like... Perfect fight. The thing that makes that fight so memorable is that it's the fight we all loved to see but didn't want to see at the same time you know yeah. just because of the emotions involved it's like you want him to stop so bad but you're also like this is mind-blowing at the same yeah. time and then because the ideology is going head to head as well yeah. it's like there's so much meaning in this fight yeah, so and then at the same time it's also like Everybody wants to know who would win in a fight against Cap and Tony. You of know, course, yeah. that's always that's always just a hypothetical fun. And then on top of that, for me, why I love this fight so much is like my favorite two characters of the MCU are Steve and Tony, and for completely different reasons. I mean, I love Steve because he's like the ideal person, the ideal good that you want to strive for. It's kind of like Naruto over here, where it's like no matter what, they never give up. They always try and do the right thing. It's my then ninja on, way exactly and that's steve and i love characters like that but then at the same time like steve is what i wish i could be and then tony i just relate to him so much where it's like he wants to do good things but he's always like messing up or going about it the wrong way or he has a bad history and it's like i get it you know or he lets his emotions get the best of him like he does in this fight so it's like just watching them go at it is just like so awesome Oh, man, we can keep going. I mean, we could do a whole podcast, dude, just about these fight scenes, bro. And then he drops the shield at the end. And I guess that's not part of the action scene, but it's just like, it's just so much weight where like mm -hmm. this relationship is done. Like that's basically where they leave it. Like they're done. Like at this point, Steve doesn't care about anything and he understands that he's messed up, but he just doesn't care. Oh man, dude, the fight's so good so good Man, well, dude, I, go ahead after, after we rank the the fight i feel like we should talk about which side we leaned more on Ooh. like for cap or for uh tony yeah dude and then let's get into spider-man bro dude how freaking hype dude was it for him to show up and just immediately immediately dude throwing hands with these heavyweights it's just like it's like so perfect man it's like oh, oh underoos i know right dude like that how was... hype were you guys when freaking the winter soldier super soldier metal arm winter soldier is going to freaking punch spider-man and so it's like oh, nothing, yeah dude it's like yeah. nothing yep he's like dude you have a metal arm that's awesome that's super dude. cool <laughs> yeah dude when he shows up like when we oh, first dude. got the thing queens I got goosebumps. I was like, peed himself. Peed himself. 
<laughs> it's it's the first time in the to MCU. This day, to this day, you get them, bro. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's the first time in the MCU that I legitimately thought, like, wow, they can do anything in this world, you know? You you have no idea what's going to happen. They can do whatever they want. Freaking, I wouldn't be surprised if freaking Batman showed up because it's Wolverine. just like it's it's it blew everything so open you know before it very much felt like these are the rules for these movies they're good movies but these are the rules you know and then after that moment it was just like you can do anything yeah we got two we got two major character uh drops in that movie yeah we had spider-man and black panther yep so it's, uh, let's let's stay on talk with with fights because there's so much to talk about, bro. Okay. Dude, and then oh man, I think another reason why I like that final fight so much is just because everybody's in brawler mode. You know, there's I mean even Tony, you know he obviously he's got some flying around, but right away they break his thruster, so his mobility is like really really lowered, and it's just everybody is just in like slugger. They're just throwing slugs and they're just trying to like knock them out. That's another reason why it's just that like guttural, visceral fight scene that I love. Um, yeah, dude. So, w- which fight scene do you guys think we should throw on the list? Is, are we going to rank? So, I think that the one when anybody thinks of a fight scene in Civil, Civil War. War, they think of the airport scene. But honestly, I think the Cap, Winter Soldier, and Tony has so much weight to it that for me, it would rank higher on the list with that fight because it's just yeah. it's so personal and still the choreography is so intense yeah the stakes are very high because it's not about saving the world anymore you know that's not what this is about this is about two yep. friends that's what this is about and it's heartbreaking <laughs> and like it's very different like the civil the airport fight is like very much like big awesome spectacle moves spectac- mm-hmm. spectacular choreography whereas the final fight is very nuanced very very specific very um subtle and uh, i i appreciate that a lot so okay look it sounds it sounds like we're probably going to do that final fight what, what do you think eric i'll be outvoted but <laughs> I, I get i get i get where you're coming from okay, um well, Go ahead. I don't know. Like they're both like like this for me right now because I mean we get we get Spider Man interacting for the first time with everybody. We get Black Panther. We get the first time um, Lang supersizes what himself. Work. Uh, uh, we we Vision. get yeah we get. Uh, we actually even get um, Rhodey oh, that's uh, paralyzing himself. Um, he didn't paralyze himself, getting paralyzed by vision. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're right. He didn't paralyze himself. It's like, <laughs> I wanted to get paralyzed right here. Yeah. yeah so paralyzed! I paralyzed that fight, myself! That fight is good enough that we should absolutely talk about it. Because honestly. Oh, yeah. I think with this group specifically, these fights, if they were both ranked, would be one and two because they're both that good. Um, that being said, let's talk about the airport fight because it deserves it because there's just so many beautiful little details in there as well. Like something that I noticed this time that I'd never noticed before is the only time Black Widow throws hands is against the Hawk. Hawk is Hawkeye? The Hawk. Against the Hawk. Is the against Hawk. Hawkeye. And then after that, she doesn't fight anymore. Mm. She she's flip sides, and I think that that is super on purpose. It's like she is literally fighting her best friend, the person that helped save her. Like she's basically the godmother of his children, and she's like, "This isn't worth it." Like they don't show it, they don't talk about it, but that's clearly the headspace. Where she's like, "This isn't worth it." We're like still this friends, isn't right? Worth- exactly. Like that's they make a joke him. about it. Yeah, but it's like this this isn't worth it, and that's when she does the flip, where it's like, "I'm not doing this anymore." Because when, when she does let Cap and Bucky go and she's slow, slowing down Black Panther, she's not doing it because she agrees with them. She's doing it because Steve isn't going to stop. So, and so she's not, she's not going to go all the way down where that road leads. So she's just going to let Steve do what Steve's going to do, even though she disagrees with him, because it isn't worth it to her. And speaking of Black Widow, 
I think this film is the one where she fully becomes her own person. I think she has fully broken down all her barriers. She's fully letting go of everything in her past. And these, this is now her family and her friends. And you can see in the way that she's talking to everybody, like there's no more, like she's not fake with anybody in this film at any moment. And it, yeah. So this is like her, she's finally become herself and she's let go of everything in her past. Mm, I that's agree. a great point. Yeah. I agree with that. <clears throat> you guys so. don't want to talk about anything else in that <laughs> fight scene? I mean, I already brought up a lot. Yeah, and I, I think I, we already... Great. Um... Oh man, that shield doesn't doesn't uh, obey the laws of physics at all. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good line. Yeah, and then also, who's the one that told uh, Spider Man that he like? Have you ever been in a fight? Because usually there's not this much. <laughs> yeah, it's Falcon. It's Falcon. It's Falcon. Yeah, he's like, all right, I'm sorry. Then he just leaves. Which again, another awesome freaking detail is um, Winter Soldier like throws like a sign at him. And then he's hiding behind a pillar. And again, Peter's like nothing. Like, hey, bro, I think you forgot this. And just chucks it right back at him, dude. So perfect understanding of just Spider-Man's like character. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the first time where I was just like, wow, that is that's Spider-Man. You know, like all the others, they all have good pieces about them. But this was the first one where I was, and immediately I was sold like this is the best Spider-Man because it's just he embodies the character perfectly in my mind, like especially yeah. young Spider-Man. The we'll, comics, we'll, yes, from the comics. Yeah, we'll we'll see how he does in the future. Um, but out of Far From Home, it looks like he's going to still nail it in the future. But this is like perfect young Peter Parker, early Spider-Man. Yeah, it's so great. Um, yeah, Black Panther was great. He's got some awesome choreography. Bucky, Bucky doesn't do much in that fight. He's mostly, I mean, I love the pairings too, bro. Like the pairings are so mm -hmm. well. Like when, after they do the initial skirmish and then everybody runs at each other, it's Bucky against Black Panther. It's Cap against Iron Man. It's uh, Black Widow and, and uh, Hawkeye. It's uh, Falcon and Iron War Machine. <laughs> Iron War Machine. Falcon. And then, uh, and then other people doing cool things. <laughs> What, was, it Wanda, was it Wanda versus Vision? I don't think. I think I might have that flipped. I think it might be Vision versus Falcon and Wanda versus uh, um, War Machine. I think. Can't remember. I don't, I don't remember who Ant Man was fighting. I feel like Ant Man and Wanda are kind of just like all over the place. They kind of do little beats oh, and yeah. pieces everywhere. Well, yeah. In the beginning of that fight, it's just Wanda saving people on yeah. her side over mm -hmm. and over and over again. She's on support. Yeah, and that is one thing. Wanda kind of makes sense because she's very green with her abilities. But yeah. like, if we wanted to really be like, if everybody's really fighting, I feel like Vision. Oh yeah, would have, like he would wipe the, the floor, floor with, with people. Yeah, and it, well, yes, th in this fight at this stage, Vision would have wiped the floor with everybody. But like at this point in the MCU with with Wanda and her powers, I feel like. There's Scarlet Witch would just wreck. Oh yeah, everybody. Yeah, I uh, yeah. Scarlet like, Witch is definitely the the higher power level. Even even if uh like the only person I can see kind of um having trouble with well not having as much trouble as Thor. Um, but oh, no, I, man. she's even, so even I know like even Hulk like if Hulk was in the the equation she would still just wreck everybody. Yeah. Well, for for the longest time in in the like, people said that Thor Thor slash Hulk were the strongest Avengers, and then, but honestly, after Wanda comes in the equation, she's at least in the comics, she is one of the most powerful beings. Yeah, <laughs> it's like her um, Dark Phoenix. And stuff. Yeah, let's talk real quick about where Thor. Well, Thor not so much because I really feel like Thor wouldn't care. Um, I feel like Thor would be against regulation. I think both Thor and Hulk, based on the sto He'll characters that they created, all the time. would be on uh, Steve's side. Mm -hmm. um, Bruce Banner, just because freaking, what is it, Senator Ross is the one trying to tell him what to do. Because Kaelin was talking about that, and like, yeah, that would have been so interesting just to see Bruce there 
when um what's his name he's not just general ross anymore is he secretary he's secretary ross i think because secretary ross comes to the compound and he's like hey you guys have to do this because you're dangerous and blah 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 just would have loved to see bruce there and he's like hey do you remember when you brought a platoon of soldiers to fight me at a college yeah that there wasn't there wasn't any collateral damage when you did that right or, or when you made blomsky and let him turn into a freaking abomination yeah abomination yeah there wasn't any so i'm totally gonna listen to you telling me what to do because you're clearly i just would have loved that but i guess that would have just destroyed his argument <laughs> yeah um okay so we are ranking the cap fight still cap tony and uh iron man no yeah. cap tony and winter soldier sorry and this is going number one Right? One, one, one. Yeah, they're up to this point. There is not a fight in the series that just has the emotion. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, on top of the flawless choreography. Exactly. Oh, and then Winston, pull it out. This, this movie has the best straight, like, flash, just splash screen of any of the films in the MCU, in my, in my opinion. The comic, Winston. Oh, yeah. Because there are so, other films that do this, that pull panels straight out of the comic. I, I was going to talk about, so like, I own this comic. I read, so I was going to talk about this here later, but the, he's talking about this, this splash scene right there. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, in the fight, it's such a, like, it goes slow-mo, and it's like, oh, oh, God. Yeah, the music fits with it perfectly. And it's like, this is just the most, I feel like, the best utilization of a... Of a like straight out of the comic panel, yeah, to and, the to the film. And before this movie came out, I had already read Civil War. I had known about Civil War for years, and for me, it was the best Marvel comic I ever read. So that's why I was so excited for this movie. And then they said Spider Man is going to be in it, and I was like, "What?" And then yeah, during that, like I already had goosebumps that whole fight, and then they showed that little bit, and I was just like, "This is." It was overwhelming, honestly. It was overwhelming. In a good way. It's great. It's so it's over it's over the other Captain America highway fight. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where the action scene is. Now let's go back and let's talk about importance to the MCU. Give us the current list. The current list. Let me let up real quick. Let me find it. Okay. The current list is, uh, I'm going to say the top half, uh, Avengers, Age of Ultron, Guardians, Winter Soldier, and Thor. Okay. What's your guy's gut reaction? You think it's behind Avengers? Okay. I, can, yeah. I, can, I can understand that. That's totally like, yeah, I can see that. But... For me, since they introduced Spider-Man, which is a huge part of the MCU, Black Panther. and Black Panther, and at the end we get the little tease to Wakanda, um, and then we have this integral relationship, this break, this friendship that has between broken the apart. Team. Between, yeah, the Avengers. Splits up the whole Avengers, and that's the setup for the biggest fight in the universe. You know? So I'm like, that's... For me, it's I think this goes direct. number one. I don't know, man. But do we have more movies without the first Avengers? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like the first one is super important. And we uh, get Thanos in it. That's true. Is the formation of the team more important than the breaking of the team? Because you can't break a team without forming a team. True. It's the chicken and you know, the egg I, situation. I don't know, man. Is it chicken or the egg? The thing is, though, Avengers didn't introduce any new characters. Um, maybe Hill. Yeah, yeah they was, it was Maria Hill's first, and I guess Black Widow. No, no, because nope. she was in Iron Man too. It's the first time uh, we see Clint do anything, but yeah, uh, but we have still... like a little bit of Clint. Well, this, just is, like... this is the first time we see. I guess not the first time we see anybody do anything, but it's just, yeah, I do. But like right now, like 
Spider-Man is carrying the franchise right now, like the whole MCU. Mm-hmm. Like he 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 by himself has taken over for both Cap and I, the Iron Man series. And you he's. Think that, you think that'll change after Doctor Strange? N- no, I don't think so. I do think Doctor Strange is pivotal, but like if you ask people, hey, what are your favorite movies in the MCU, not counting Avengers? Yeah. It's like Iron Man movies, Captain America, Ma- Captain America movies, and Spider Man movies. Like m- maybe in different orders, but those are the three ones. And like, you know, for as great as Thor, some of the Thor movies are. And yeah, it's basically it. You know, as good as these Doctor Strange movies have been. And then again, like when Black Panther had his standalone, like that was a phenomenon. Yeah. But you're you're not wrong, dude. Like it may Avengers set the formula yeah. for this movie. Yeah. Like even like this film even follows the formula and the steps that were laid by Avengers. I, oh I, my god. I, I gotta I gotta stick with number one. I gotta stick with Avengers. Yeah. How important is it to the characters though? Like the first Avengers movie is pivotal to Iron Man, it's pivotal to Tony. Um well, that's, that's- it's a hard thing too to to discuss because they're always changing because yeah. I don't feel, I don't feel like they're the same people anymore. Yeah, they're totally not. They're totally different. Yeah, so I mean at different points in time, I mean I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Avengers, man. I think it goes second. Okay. It Just yeah, second. everything is because of Avengers. And it's like even though this movie perfects the ideas that Avengers does, it doesn't really blow anything open the way that some future movies will. Wait, well, it does, but just not not enough. All right, like I'm splitting not... the splitting the team is super important, but I think Avengers is just a little bit more important. I am I am dying to hear which which side you guys would pick. So I fi- I think we should talk about that. Okay. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this first. So. I'm... In this, in this comic, the situations, it's, it's interesting because I hadn't read this in a while, even though I own it. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to watch the movie and then read the comic right after and like really compare this. And it's crazy to me that it's like, when you think about the MCU as a whole, the, the whole start of this thing of the, you know, breaking the camel's back with that one explosion, you'd be like, but that's small compared to what's happened in the MCU. You know, we've seen aliens invade new york we've seen them throw a city down you know and like hurt a whole bunch of people so blowing up like a little a part of an apartment of like a office building doesn't seem like that big of an issue it's the same in the comic it's just this small little incident and there's like three homes that have, that were blown up yeah i think that's um, what you said where it's just it's the straw that broke the camel's back yeah yeah you know they'd already dropped a couple logs in the last few movies and then this final straw was like, okay, no more. Yep. Um, and then in the comics, it is different as well because the accords are of them unmasking and revealing their identities. That's not a big issue in the MCU because a lot of the heroes that we have so far are already public. So it doesn't And matter. I like, I like the conflict here better because it feels more realistic. You know, I feel like a lot of heroes would unmask themselves willingly you know, or just would never have their identity a secret. Period. Well, we kind of get we kind of get that with uh, with T'Challa because he just straight up takes the mask off. Yeah. Yep. And then they're like, "Oh, what's up?" <laughs> and then also your, just, uh, the idea of government oversight is just like, yeah, that's real. It's like yeah. such a big thing in general. Yeah. Whereas, so I I like this conflict better. Yeah, I I feel like they both serve their purpose. But yeah, it's interesting watching them because I remember when I first watched the movie that I was like, oh, this is different. But I still loved the movie. But I, in my head, in the back of my head, I was like, I think I kind of like the comic one just a little bit better. But now reading it again, I'm like, honestly, like, I kind of like this one a little bit better. Even though the comics can delve more into, you know, like yeah. what each person is since they have such a, you know, bigger cast of they have the Fantastic Four and, and more they have time. The X-Men. They have, you know, they each one of them have what they were doing during Civil War. Even though this is a more, the, the movie is a more, um, you know, standalone story, more concentrated story. I feel like for that, the, the, the debate of 
right and wrong is still there, you know? And it's like, okay, both of these people have, you know, le legitimacy to stand on and they both have good opinions. And I, that, that's like my favorite thing about civil war. It's just, you know, it's the ideology of it. And again, that's why after reading civil war as well, I was like, oh, Captain America isn't as, you know, black and white as I thought he was. And this movie even does it better than that. So I, I don't know, for me, I would say in the movie version, I, I have to stand with Cap, I think. Same. Oh, okay. So I guess I am going to differ from you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. Um, I totally get where Cap is coming from, but... Yeah, and I think that's across the board. I think if we were on Iron Man's side, we'd, mm -hmm. we'd get where Cap is coming from. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the terms on on Iron Man's side, on Tony's side, but like when he's laying it out there, he's just trying to do what's best for everybody. Um, he's he's like, this is the road of least resistance. Like, if if we don't do this, they're like, he's they're pretty much gonna make us. We're gonna end up. They're gonna try and make us. Yeah, and then it's like, what are we're supposed to be the good guys and. Like, if we do this, we become the bad guys. So, what's the big deal? Let's... I mean, we're our... We did cause those things. So, let's just actually man up and say, yeah, we did. And let's, like, take the punishment. And, you know, I mean, we'll still be the Avengers, not in the same way, but, I mean, we'll still be able to work together and stuff like that. I yeah. do think that there should have been more, like, haggling and... Um, Debate? Negotiation? Like, yeah, definitely more negotiation, because they were getting screwed with, like, yeah, you know, you know, you do exactly what we tell you to do mm -hmm. when we tell you to do it. There is no, like, other stipulations, like, that kind of thing. Like, if there was an instance where I don't know how that would go. Like we like, you don't agree with us, but it like needs to be, I don't know. I don't know, but there need to be some sort of clause where if they all agree that this had to be done and then the others didn't yeah. agree that they could go and Let's do it. That, whatever. That, that's exactly, you know, the, the, I think the, the key debate happens when Steve gets captured and Tony shows up right right before B B Bucky escapes. And it's the conversation that Tony and Steve have where it's like Steve almost almost signed because he's like, you know what? You know, we'll sign. It's more important to keep the team together and then we'll fix it later. Mm -hmm. But already, you know, and what, what Steve says is it's, it's what, what he said before. It's like what happens, you know, when we need to go somewhere and they don't let us. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to let a bunch of old for the most part, dudes with agendas and their dumb countries stop me if I'm a superhero yeah. from doing what I know is the right thing. Yeah. And, and the thing, another thing, and I remember saying this when the film first came out is like, we've already saved the world like four times. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. Like we're having this conversation. Like, yes, there was collateral damage. That's why we have Tony money bags over here. Yeah. But like we've li the alternative is you're all dead. Yeah. And not because we're going to kill you, but because you're going to die without us. Like, the can has already been opened. Pandora's box has already been opened. And now there's no choice. And what's also delightful about this debate is, like, how scary is that if you're just a normal person? Yeah. Where it's like, we just have to trust that these are going to be good people. And yes, they've had a good track record, but who knows what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, exactly. What, what's it's to say debate. that they're not going to be like Watchmen, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's pretty or what much happens, what it, or what happens with Wanda later. Yeah, where it's like <laughs> m m maybe this whole first generation is all great, but then the next generation they're all alcoholics and sociopaths. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I wanted to talk about that in the movie. In my opinion, I, I guess this is this is debatable, but in my opinion, Cap wins in the end. You know, in my opinion, kind but of it, in the comics, like. He straight up, this is the end. Like, he gets arrested. That's how it ends. He, he, 
he himself is just like, oh, I realize I'm wrong. And he gets arrested and he's like, everyone stand down. That's the end. So, so he does I'm not. I'm going to tell you why. Because Punisher when did that comic come back? When did that comic come out? Ooh. Like mid 2000s? 90s? No. no. Uh, I think it's early. Like, let me see if there's a date on here. I'm pretty sure it's like 2006. Dude. It's like mid 2000s. 2004? Maybe. 2004, 2006. I'll look it up. Give me a sec. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll propose my argument, although it may fall, fall apart. But I can almost guarantee you that the reason those authors went that way, they went the let the government be in control route, is because this is pretty shortly after 9-11 happened. 2006, 2007. Yeah. So it's five years after. So America is still deep in the war on terror and the, the government has to do what the government has to do. And nobody gets to be above the rules. And I, I guarantee you that that is why that storyline in the comics at that time, because they, they were writing that 2004, 2005, and mm. then it comes out 2005, 2006, 2007. But like, you know, you can see the, the difference in the times. Whereas now in 2016, a decade later, people's trust in our governments and political systems aren't as strong as they were back then and even worse today. <laughs> yeah. Another, uh, like, straight out of the comics scene that I was, sorry, like, I know we're, I'm getting, kind of getting off track, but... Uh, we're talking about Civil War, and you're going to show us a comic in the Civil War comic. How is this off track? No, I know, because we're, we're supposed to be talking about uh, important CMCU, but... Um, no, we, we decided already. Oh, we did? Yeah, it's Oh, that's right. That, we're talking about the debate, yeah. But, like, that's another, like, straight out of yeah. the comics scene, you know? And then his face right there. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. It's, it's pretty amazing how close Joe and Anthony Russo got. They're like, they were obviously, this oh, is yeah. the blueprint, and we're going to adapt it as yeah. well as we can. I, that, this movie is a prime example of how you can respect the material. Because this, this uh, comic arc is amazing, and they make the movie better, arguably, without half the characters. Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Paramount Plus. For shame. I don't want to watch. Um, it, got, it got a nine, Nate. No. I asked Winston. I guarantee you whoever freaking did that stupid review is somebody who's never played a damn Halo game. You guys drank your drinks in complete unison, by the way. Um, what was I going to say? Um, dang it. Anyway, I forgot. Let's move on. I haven't said any marvelous facts, so let, let's get some of these Ooh. out of the way. Wait, marvelous facts. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans. Oh, I remembered. It. I remembered. Hold up. Did you guys catch the director cameo in this film? Oh yes, I did. I did. Winston. He is uh, the therapist that is supposed to talk to. Um, to Bucky Barnes, but he actually gets killed by Zemo. Oh, and he's in the tub. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't know how that worked. He was like a doctor helping, uh, I think, Black Widow in so in Winter Soldier, and then he gets murdered in this one, and then he goes to like an eight. No, no, it's it's Cap. a different guy. He's got a mustache. He looks a little different. You know, yeah, it's like not the same twin dude. brother or something. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans describe the dynamic between Tony Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man, and Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Captain America, as a marriage, saying, We love each other, but it's explosive. You're working towards the same goal, but you have very different approaches to it. It's blurry, and that's what makes it great. No one's right. No one's wrong. It's going to make it even harder for them to come to an agreement. And um, I feel like this is a side note to it, and it's more of a theory. Uh, but uh, the movie is considered as uh, Star Wars, the Star Wars Episode 3 of the uh, MCU of uh, Captain America. Uh, so a vengeful Zemo causes a rift between Captain America and Iron Man and tears the Avengers apart, exposes the truth behind the death of Tony's parents to manipulate and force Captain America and Iron Man to turn on each other and fight. Palpatine! Mm, yeah. 
I feel like Obi-Wan fighting Anakin was just a side effect. Like, I don't think Palpatine really cared what Obi-Wan did. That's true. Yeah. Um, another quick one. And also, if anything, I feel like Obi-Wan kind of threw a wrench in his plans by freaking dismembering Anakin. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the end of the movie, the Avengers logo on Captain America's arm is no longer there. Oh, wow. Represent representing the fact that the Avengers are no longer his. I I rec I realized that um right as he's about to drop I, the shield. I never I, saw that. I saw it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, the last one before we continue is uh, the film coincides with the 75th anniversary of Captain America, the 10th anniversary of the original Civil War comic, and Black Panther's 50th anniversary. Wow! Nice. Really nailed cool. that. Um, what was I going to say? God dang it. There's just so much good stuff. I keep forgetting the good <laughs> stuff I got to say. Let's talk about their costumes. So we have Iron Man's costume and Captain America's costume to yeah. talk about. Uh, Eric, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what, what did you think of Captain America? You guys America's want me to pull him up? I really liked it. What, really? What's our current yeah. number one? Let me pull it up as you pull yours up. That doesn't, no, don't take that wrong the way. I feel like it's very reminiscent of the one we talked about last time. It is, but it is not exactly the same. Yes. Uh, so yeah, pretty much the isn't, difference. Isn't, isn't like the red around the star not there anymore? Yeah, exactly. The little red hints are gone and the little weird white sleeves the white around his biceps are gone from Ultron. Uh, but right now we have Winter Soldier as number one, Ultron number two, Old Boy, The Avengers, and then Propaganda Boy. I really like this suit. It's a good suit. Yeah. What was the first one again? Winter Soldier. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, I'd have to actually, I think, if Nate's actually pulling them up. All right, I'm, I'm going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, yeah I actually need a visual, so. Because <laughs> I can't just remem like, remember. Okay. okay, let's see this. So this is... That's Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. I love that. So suit. clean. Yeah, so good. So minimal. Mm -hmm. And then this is... Oh, he still got that's, the white and red on the on the abs. Yeah, that's really cool. I I don't know. I like that. Might be my favorite. The Civil War costume. Yeah. What do you think, Nate? I agree. I think it is peak Captain America. I think this is the most, at least MCU version, the most Captain America suit there is for the for the modern time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can completely agree with that. Uh, I did th have the thought, though, right as um, the final fight was about to end. I was like, how crazy is it that us as a society, we are watching a movie about a dude with an A on the, in his forehead, and we're like, this is awesome. <laughs> you know? Right. Like, you go back and you see some of those 70s shows of Captain America and everything, you're like, oh my god, this is... Whew. But, like, you don't even think about the stupid A on his forehead anymore, you know? Well, the thing is, like, it's subtle. And it's, you know, so that helps. And, like, everything else looks so good that mm -hmm. it's, like, it doesn't distract too much, you know? Yeah. And he doesn't wear the helmet 24-7. Yeah. It's, it's more like his uniform, his, 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 his uh, work outfit, really, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're putting Civil War at number one, dropping Winter Soldier down to number two. Now, let's rank the Iron Man suit. Should we start with the Spidey suits as well? Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Heck yes. Why Heck I'm here. Yes. This would be number one. No, because we got <laughs> ranked two of them. Well, yeah. his first one sucks. Well, yeah, but it's still something. That's the whole point. <laughs> What's up? What we're gonna? Okay, well, yeah, well, obviously, this is done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Tony's it's... Tony's first V one Spider Man suit is number one. Yeah. What do you want to call that suit? What do you want to call it? Civil War suit. 
Civil War suit. Okay. And it or doesn't it Spider-Man doesn't Spider Man V one. It doesn't change in homecoming. Homecoming, does it? Gosh. It does not. It just gets ranked again with his sweatsuit outfit. Because he wears both in homecoming. He does? Yeah. At the end. Ooh, I don't remember that. It's been a long time since I've seen Homecoming. Uh, so what the original suit? Let's call it Jammies. I'm gonna call it Jammies. Yeah, we uh, let's call it Jammies, and uh, let's come up with a good name for Spider Man. Let's call it Tony's Tony's Spider Man suit or something like that, because he made it. It's the only one that he makes. That's not true. There's another yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You guys call it whatever you want. Eric, what do you, what do, you do? You have any thoughts for the name? <laughs> Tony's baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's call it Tony's baby. Tony's That's baby. So All right. <laughs> um, when you get a chance, I need to know Iron Man's number one right now. What's his number one one? Avengers, Avengers? boy. I feel like this one looked a lot. Very similar to his last one we saw him in, too. Yeah, to the Mark 40... Um, which one is it? Mark 45. So is it the 45 again? No, it's not the same one. I know it's a different suit, but it's very similar to the 45. The 45 is what we saw in Ultron. Mm. I feel like the, the difference that I saw in this one is especially when they're going into uh, like the the base where zemo's at right before everything goes to crap is that he's got like all these little lights all around his body you know and then also yeah and then but other than that i feel i feel like the red to gold ratio is about the same yeah because i was gotta get that red to gold ratio i can't really find a good picture right now so i think we're just gonna use this one now give me a second okay uh right now the rank is the top five are Avengers Boy, Hulkbuster, Suitcase Boy, Triangle Cool Boy, and then uh, the Mark 45 from Ultron. Okay. I think I found it. Yay! Sweet. Make it so, number one. Okay, here's Avengers. So awesome. I love that suit. Yeah, it's it's almost as, as perfect as my, my, the, my main man. My main man. You mean the one that's number six on the list? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then this is uh This is the other one. This is Civil War. Mm-hmm. I mean it looks good. It does. Yeah, it does. I like the complete like new shape instead of stupid triangles. <laughs> looks looks good. And then this is also the tightest fitting, maybe other than suitcase boy. Yeah, yeah. I do like that. I like I like how it's just like it, it looks like he's not wearing like something that's like super bulk. Like he's made it a yeah. little more lightweight, you know, and manageable. Uh, this is yeah, it's definitely less bulky than that one. Mm-hmm. But I like the bulky look. Mm. Like, oh, not, I do too. That's why. Not like super bulky, but yeah, like. Because, like, also, this has so much like little bits going on, you know. Mm-hmm. It bits. <clears throat> it's got so many little bits and doohickeys and divots. Whereas this one, it still has a bunch, but like it's cleaner. You know, it's more simplistic, more classic. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, where would you put it, Eric? Eric. I could see it as number two, honestly. What's your current number two? Uh, Hulkbuster. I mean, it does look good. It does look good. Is it over? You know, he doesn't even have his freaking helmet on in this. This is not a good picture. Why did you just look up Civil War? Look up Civil War Iron Man suit. Shut up. It's right there. Why isn't he flying? <laughs> Whatever. He flies in a second. Uh, is it better than Hulkbuster? It's better than Hulkbuster. What? You're crazy. It just looks cooler than Hulkbuster. You know? 
I think I'm there. It just looks cooler than Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster's so badass, dude. It is, dude. It is. But what makes this better than it, dude? It looks cooler. No, it doesn't, dude. Hulkbuster is freaking huge. The Juggernaut style, uh, like freaking dome mm -hmm. to it, and the way well, he can maybe, order maybe you new arms. Like Juggernaut. <laughs> <laughs> Which I can get behind because Juggernaut's awesome. Yeah, but yeah. so yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. When I think of Iron Man, I just think of the sleek. Uh, red or the red and gold kind of suits. So I mean, the Hulkbuster is. I mean, yeah, dude, it's it's great, but it's a gimmick. You know, yeah, it's it, like it's, it's only good. boosted down Hulk, dude. Yeah. I, apparently, I'm just all in for the gimmicks because I love Hulkbuster. I love Suitcase Boy. Well, like the gimmicks, the limited edition. <laughs> yeah, dude, come on. <laughs> Who wants to go to a normal? <laughs> I want to go to a normal Walmart and get a normal Iron Man suit. I want I want the limited edition freaking, you know. He wants the Trader Joe's edition. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Target, but. <laughs> Trader Joe's is even better, yeah. All right, yeah. This, the council has spoken. Yeah, yep. yep. Maybe it goes Danny number was two. It was number yeah, two. Yeah, you should uh, yeah, grill Danny about that. Yeah, both me and Eric were totally wrong, and I'm pretty sure Winston's right. <laughs> Since we're talking about Iron Man suits, um, another marvelous fact in the climax, before destroying uh, the suit's arc reactor, Cap tears the Iron Man helmet open from Tony's face. If he had not done this before the suit lost power, Stark likely would have suffocated, implying that Rogers was simply trying to end the fight rather than kill Tony. Yeah, I get that. I, I totally got that. It's like, no, I didn't know why he took the helmet off, but I did like, the, Steve wasn't trying to kill him. Yeah. But in the moment... It seems it like totally he, feels like yeah. he's trying to kill him. Yeah. And dude, honestly, since we're talking about it, let's talk about Robert Downey Jr. performances. Because yeah. that was just like the fear in his eyes in that moment. He's like, he's about to Bro, kill me right now. So you know? many good moments. Like I I think his whole conversation with Peter Parker mm. is just you can just feel it, bro, on set. Like everybody knows that what they're doing is historic and amazing, and they're just having the time of their life. Like, I don't think I've seen Robert Downey Jr. happier in a scene than he is making that scene because he knows how great it's going to be. And then on top of that, real quick, there's an awesome little beat where Tony asks Peter why is he does what he does. And Peter says, you know, like, when you can do the things that you can do and you don't do them. The you bad know, things happen because of you. Yeah, bad things happen because of you. That is like very much a parallel to Steve's argument as to why they cannot join the event. They, they cannot, he can't sign the Sokovia Accords mm -hmm. because if there are bad things happening and he doesn't do it because of the Sokovia Accords, that's on him. Mm -hmm. In his mind, that's on him. And then when, when Peter says that, they cut to Tony for a beat. And you can see like he, just, he doesn't really get serious, but like he just stops, which is beautiful acting, bro. And I noticed this for the first time in this, this watching. And this viewing, and it's just like, and then still Tony's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna manipulate you, mm -hmm. or I'm and, gonna, and, I guess not manipulate you. He's like, let me guide you and mold you to my way of thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but it, what's even great about that scene is that I've, I've, uh, <clears throat> I've seen later down the road that uh, that when he's like, uh, movie like, I'm gonna sit here, improvised. Yeah. It's like there's so many, so many things, especially later down the road between. Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. That they just they flow so well against each other that it's just like it's beautiful. I'd love they, to see they're them so in natural. Film. They're so natural. Yeah, right. Um, Playing completely yeah. different characters. I'd love to. I'd love to see awesome. how that would come out. Um, another marvelous fact is Marvel initially wanted to hire uh, Robert Downey Jr. to rep reprise Tony Stark as a small role with just three weeks of work. However. Downey wanted a larger role, which would lead to a bigger payday. Uh, Marvel Entertainment CEO Ike per Perlmutter was furious over the request, prompting him to order the screenwriters to write Tony Stark out of the script completely. When the deal seemed like it was off the table, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige pushed to hire Downey, citing that his casting in the film would leave the door open for sequels, new... Um, new franchises and dramatic possibilities within the MCU as this movie would drive future storylines for these films. 
As a result, with Downey's casting, the actor received a substantial payout that included a back-end particip uh, participation deal and another payout if the film's box office gross exceeded Captain America The Winter Soldier, which, of course, it did. Dude, again, the godfather of the MCU. Dude. Tony, making moves. Dude, it's it's freaking, it's Kevin Feige and then Robert Downey Jr. I know. <laughs> so great bro um give us the list for robert downey jr performances iron man 3 the avengers iron man age of ultron and iron man 2 number one yeah number one it takes the cake easy yeah. easy well i'm glad we, we had that discussion thoughts, thoughts eric <laughs> no i i agree there's, there's a lot there's a lot of emotional stuff in here especially like when he finds out that uh bucky was the one that killed his family well his parents and when Rhodey gets paralyzed yeah dude and even just like in the first like what is it uh the first two minutes that he's on screen you know with that interaction of how he wished he would have said bye to his parents and he's like, oh, yeah, it's like a really expensive, you know, therapeutic whatever, you know. And then he stops right when Pepper's talked about. And then he mm -hmm. goes back and he talks with a lady who, by the way, is in Luke Cage. So it kind of doesn't make sense. But whatever. Uh, Wait, and what? Who? The lady who's like, this was my son and you dropped oh, this yeah, baby that lady. on him. I know. Yeah. Bro, it's, uh, but, it's, um, it's a variant. It's a variant. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a different time. The, the, the multiverse was already opened. We just didn't know it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then he like grabs her arm, like she's about to pull out a gun, which again is like him just being like a little paranoid from all the oh, things shout he's been out into. to that actress. Such she is a <clears throat> excellent actress and has had much larger roles. And like shout out to her taking this tiny role, a tiny tiny scene, dude. Mm -hmm. But like her perfect, flawless performance just helps set up tony in his mindset for the rest of this film yeah and it's like if you would have gotten just any any bit actor it just wouldn't hit the same bro like you see that woman's face and it's freaking perfect man yep yep um oh man i used to know her name i actually upset that i don't remember her name oh my god i had something that to go there whatever let's talk about the villain, Baron Zemo. Before we do, uh, in this movie, T'Chaka is slain by Zemo, and his son T'Challa joins with the Avengers to track him down. In the comics, T'Challa was slain by Claw, and T'Challa joined with the Fantastic Four. Interesting. Um, whoa, 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 what's the list? Like, from the top. <laughs> Yeah. Loki, Ultron, Winter Soldier, Good. Ronin, Red Skull. Two. 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 It, it, he is not great, though. Like, he's not perfect. And honestly, like, <laughs> this is a lot. This is saying a lot. He's the weakest part about this movie, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and he's that so is. Great. And he's number two on the villains list. <laughs> and he's yeah. the weakest part. But, like, Honestly, like his writing, his manipulation, oh, yeah, skill, his, yep. yeah, Next his just, level, yeah. This, this is the kind of villain that I like to see. Like, he, if barely only has we got a fight scene, yeah, yes. And that's what I really you know? liked about um, Falcon and the Winter Falcon Soldier, the Winter Soldier, is that they take Zemo, yeah, they take Zemo, and you're like, oh, okay, like, no. He, at first, like in this movie, it's very easy to forget that he was in the military, that he is a badass, like he can do some stuff, you know, because he's just manipulating everything from the sidelines because that's what he needed to do for the situation, you know? Yeah, because and, he knows that one-on-one -on -one he can't beat any of these guys, exactly. much alone against all of them. But and then in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, you're like, oh yeah, against like goons, he can wipe the floor with people, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, they say it like he was part of their like best kill squad in Sokovia. Yeah. And... Mm -hmm. um. I just love what they do because he doesn't really feel like Zemo at all in this film. I don't know in the comics, but like, is Z Baron Zemo in the comics like a super like mastermind manipulator? Yeah, he's. I I think in the comics and stuff, he's part of Hydra. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. 
I do not know. I do really don't know anything about him in right. the comics. And I think they just flipped, like they flipped it, and like he like hates Hydra, and he hates the super soldiers, and all this. Uh, so I was really confused because I've seen some cartoons where, like he's, well, he he has the mask later on, but he's always wearing the mask. But he's like this super awesome sword fighter and. Like he's like one of the heads of Hydra. Yeah. So and yeah, they in the future they freaking really even he's so great in this film. And in the future they even make him he goes from like three D to four D. That's how good they do with this guy. Yeah. Which again, shout out to the actor as well. Oh yeah. Amazing actor. I've seen him in other things too, and he's just a great actor, period. Can we get a little clip? Well, can we get a little clip of Zemo dancing here? Yeah, we'll yes. uh, we'll we'll get it in there. <laughs> So good, bro. I am Zemo. <laughs> um, since we were talking about T'Challa, though, I'm a little confused. Let's see if you guys are going to rank his suits. No, we're not. It's the same suit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it changes. I know it changes, but it's such a subtle okay. change, and it's the okay. same suit after that. Anyways, um, I'm confused. He can jump like super high, he can hit super hard things that the black panther can do but if i remember black panther correctly he gets his powers after the ritual when he connects to all his ancestors no, bro, am i correct they they take them away from him because they have they have their ritual where they're deciding something i think who's going to be the chief or something and to make it fair they take it away from him and then so that's when he fights umbaku umbaku and, and then he wins and then they give it back to him. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, yeah, I guess you are correct. Which is kind of, it's just strange though, you, you know? You guess. I am correct. <laughs> it's just strange to me. It's like, okay, the father died immediately. So did his son already have the abilities before going to that meeting? And why didn't yeah, his father I, have those abilities still, you know? Yeah, I think I'm fairly certain that the, the, the Black Panther moniker is not mutually exclusive to the king. And once the king gets too old, he hands it down to whoever the next Black Panther is going to be. In this case, the logical choice was his son. So he's being groomed for exactly. to king. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So I guarantee you T'Challa, T'Chaka, has not been the Black Panther for probably over like a decade or more. And okay. then, and T'Challa has been the Black Panther for a while because he's super he's not green bro like he no. knows what he's doing true true so and he uh, just can't wait to be king <laughs> <laughs> um and shout out to chadwick boseman like i yeah, forgot nailing, nailing i forgot how freaking great his performance is right off the bat amazing r.i.p r.i.p yeah <laughs> Um, now let's talk CGI. I uh, just got that freaking everything CG gooped, you know, mm -hmm. it, as long as it has that, it's just going to take away, you know, if there's any criticism you can make about either fight scene, but more the final fight is that, you know, just Iron Man looks very CG. Yes, I was well, not very CG, but noticeably CG. I was about to say that um, definitely you can tell that it's kind of just like it looks like it's a, just a head, you know. Also, also, I noticed when when they're running down the freeway, it looked a little off. But I mean, I haven't really seen people run that fast, so maybe it's not off because they're just that like was actually practical. Was that really? Yeah, what they do is they put them on like a long red carpet at the front of the red carpet, then they hook that red carpet up to, or long carpet to a car that car drives at like i don't know 20 miles an hour 25 miles an hour and then they just start running as fast as they can on the carpet they're at the other end running while the car is driving it. so it looks like they're going as fast as they're running which is probably in the teens plus another 20 miles on top of that because of the car 
because the the carpet's getting dragged. Interesting. So that yeah, anytime you see them running in that um in that uh, street fight, they're on a carpet and that's all practical. Wow. So that's So when uh Winter Soldier's running and then it's Black Panther and then Cap. Yeah, that's practical. all practical. That's super all cool. That's so it's cool. Super cool. So I I retract that's my a stunt. Uh, That's comment. a stunt we we could do. Do we have a long enough carpet? <laughs> That'd be the only thing. Yeah. We just have to get a carpet and a long stretch of road. That no one is on. Okay. CGI, we have number one, Guardians. Number two, Avengers. Number three, Ant-Man. Number four, Iron Man. Number okay, five, okay, Winter okay. Soldier. Ah, oh, God, it's hard. It is. We're is getting it over in, For Man? me, it's like, I can't. I can't. It's I feel definitely like I not over Guardians. Well, Guardians is phenomenal. No, let's say five, because the Iron Man suit is so good in Iron Man. Yeah, but Spider-Man... Dude, that's another thing. Spider-Man is CG in so much of this film. Like, basically, if, he, if his face isn't showing, he's CG. And, like, could you tell? Like, the underoos scene? CG. Like, it's, it's pretty insane how good that character model is. You know? Do you think it's better than Ant-Man, though? I don't, I don't think it's better than Ant-Man because, I, you know, the whole shrinking thing, like, they were just so cool with all that stuff. But I think it might be better than Iron Man. I think it is better than Iron Man. Okay. Okay, yeah. I, I'm, I'm all right with that. Winnie, do you have any uh, Whatever thoughts? the father says. <laughs> the father of CGI. Yeah. All the little CGI. Oh, hold up. Let's just make sure I'm not missing like any <laughs> other like really big CG thing. So Ant Man looks great, but he does look a little CG. Honestly, Tony and Rhodes look the most CG. Vision looks pretty CG. Spider Man is freaking flawless. Black mm. Panther's another one where he's a lot. I don't think he's as CG as Spider Man is, but he is a lot of CG as well, and he looks pretty good. Although and, he does look fake sometimes as well. Also, shout out to that costume design. Like, I, I'm consistently surprised with the MCU about how well they adapt the comic book suits to live action. And that was one where it's like, this looks fantastic. It looks so I good. Oh, right? Because, it, yeah, it looks great. And then, uh, as well, I remember right when they were teasing that Spider-Man was going to be in this movie and they announced the actor and everything. And they didn't show the suit yet because the first time we saw the shoot, the suit was in the first trailer. Which they shouldn't have even shown. It was not the first trailer for this movie. It, it wasn't? was like the second or third trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I remember that uh, the what, somebody saw it. Somebody went and they saw the costume designer and they like saw the suit and they're like, oh my gosh, that looks so good. It looks like this is Marvel's actual Spider-Man. And like, that's what they said. And it's like, it's totally true. Like it's the, it's the classic look still looking fresh and unique in it. So many ways. It's definitely a tweak on the classic look. Because, like, I mean, I can pull out, you know, the Spider-Man from some of the early Spider-Man comics, and it's not the same. It's not the same, but it's like, obviously, that was their inspiration, and it I looks... Think, I think the Spider-Man suit at the end of No Way Home... Not No Way Home. Yeah, it's... Far, no way far home, from right? home. Far from home is like the straight inspiration from the comics. Like, I think that one looks more like the comics than this one does. And I'm not saying this one looks bad. This one looks phenomenal. But this is, I feel like this is very much the MCU Spider-Man, not the comic Spider-Man. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying. But it's, it's very, um, I don't know. It's still very different compared to what we had before that, which was, of course, Andrew Garfield's. Judge Garfield's had, you know, at least in the first movie, it was very muted colors and everything like that. And this yeah. is like, pow. And the eyes. Yeah. The eyes were like freaking like, yes, so good. That was a nice touch. And they, they explained it with the narrative, so mm -hmm. it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, because he's got like all the black on his arms. Like, yeah. that is not in the original comic. Um, yeah, it's, it's above Iron Man. It's above Iron Man. It's, it's not as impressive visually as ant-man but it's still great okay so that makes it the new number four cool uh, 
<clears throat> it's time to guess the Rotten Tomato score. It's the prices, I mean the Rotten Tomato score is right! 91. Ooh. I'm pretty sure it's not that high, but it deserves it. It deserves more than 91. I'm going to say 89. Yeah, I was going to say that, but I was like, nah, man, it deserves the 9. It Honestly, deserves 91. I would have said the same. I've already seen it, unfortunately. Um, Weak but song. I would, have say, I would have said 89 as well. It's 90. Oh, oh we split the difference. Between. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. So you would win in Price is Right rules, right? Because I went over. You yeah. went over. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to the, the finale. <laughs> going to the final. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm I'm going to apparently I'm just like obsessed with the scene or something. Uh, but there was like so many interesting facts, or maybe just everyone's obsessed with this scene. Um, but like, how freaking great is the scene when Captain America is holding a helicopter with his arms? Oh, oh man, that was my so god, cool. <laughs> it's ah! so good! <laughs> it's so good, and. I have a story to tell you guys with all the facts that I found about it. So Chris Evans injured his arm muscles while filming the iconic yeah, shot of that. Captain America holding back a helicopter with his hands. Evans said, that shot is a little bit of bicep porn. Uh, zoom, zoom in on the biceps. That was the script. That's what the script said. Uh, Kevin, Fe <sighs> wow. Kevin Feige didn't airbrush my biceps. That's me. It's not... a. Uh, it's not a utilitarian shot. It's a shot where you're trying to look heroic. That position of holding the helicopter with one hand and ledge with another is actually very unnatural position to uh, use to stop something. But we used it because I have to flex my bicep. You're trying to make this scene look great. And I genuinely messed my arm up doing that shot because of the strain. Robert Downey Jr. joked that the filmmakers didn't mind that Evan hurt himself because of how great the shot turned out. And they have been using it to promote the film ever since. Anthony Russo revealed that the iconic shot almost did not happen because on the day of uh, the filming, there was a mis uh, miscommunication with the costume department and Evans came in wearing a thick jacket. They immediately sent him back to change because then they uh, wouldn't have been able to film the shot of his, of his muscles bulging as intended in the script. Co-director... Joe Russo said that the most powerful shot of the film was Steve Rogers stopping a helicopter. Uh, the shot was featured uh, in the first teaser trailer for this movie. And so hype, bro. I remember yeah. it. Oh, it yeah. Like, yeah. What is happening? This is the best <laughs> thing ever. This is actually Chris Evans stopping a real helicopter. <laughs> and, and it was. Did you know that? Like, they actually did that tension. Like, it wasn't a live helicopter, but they actually had a ledge and they pulled it apart from him. So you would actually have that tension. That's why crazy. He, he hurt himself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, J Russo said Chris Evans worked very hard in the gym to physically embody the character because they wanted to test the limits of Steve's physical strength. About the shot uh, itself, he noted on set he had Chris strain, uh, straining against a crane holding the helicopter to get this fantastic shot of his muscles bulging, and you can feel the energy and determination as he tries to stop it. Chris Evans said of the famous I know it's like a full thing. No, it's worth it, bro. Please. <laughs> Chris Evans said of the famous helicopter shot, um, that was really my arm, and you know that. Uh, oh, and you know what? I took a page of Anthony Mackie's book. When we were doing uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron for certain scenes, I worked out just before the take. But there were a bunch of scenes where I was the only one out of the cast doing it, and I'd be embarrassed. I feel sh I feel shame. So I didn't do it that often. But then we started Civil War, and Mackie has no shame. Before each take, Mackie's just curling weights nonstop. And I thought, yeah, what are you doing, Chris? Just curl some weights. Who cares? I'm not going to worry about 20 people judging me as opposed to 200 million people seeing the scene forever. So before the helicopter scene, I lifted a lot of weights and got pumped. It's not like I woke up and looked like that. That was me lifting weights for hours on end prior to filming the scene. There certainly was a lot of pressure. I was fully aware 
of what they wanted to uh, wanted that shot to be. I wanted that shot to be great too. Yeah, it was great. Um, wow, man. There's so many good scenes in this film. Oh, yeah. Um, speaking of Anthony Mackie and, and Chris Evans, I think this, this film is also where the seed is planted where Sam Wilson is going to be the next Captain America. Mm-hmm. Because especially in that airport fight, like Cap lets Sam Wilson take the bullet. Because Cap's like, I'm, I'm going to hold them back so that the rest of the team can go stop Zemo. And Sam Wilson's like, no, I'll do it. You and Bucky go. And Cap's like, okay. And he totally lets him do it. And it's like, damn, that is a Captain America move right there. Also, on that note, another iconic, iconic shot in this film is when Steve kisses Agent Carter and Sam and Bucky are they're like, safe. they're sitting no, bro. But it's great. It's even better than that. Because they're sitting in the buggy, just pissed at each other. Just like, I hate you. I hate you. We're only here because of Steve. Like, you disgust me. I hate you. And then the next shot of them is like, yeah, bro. That is a, there's like no more distilled bro moment than that scene. Like, do you want to know what it is to be a bro? Watch that scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> I remember the first time I watched it, and even till now, like, I chuckle. But, like, in that, in that theater, that, that first time I watched it, there was people laughing, just laughing it's, hard to that but It's scene. like it's, it's more than just funny because it's yeah. hilarious, but it's also, like, real. Yeah, it's like, relatable, a, you know? Yeah, it's relatable, and that is a, such a huge moment informing, like, how these two guys feel about Steve. Like, they are, like, they're, like, they mean it. He means everything to them. It's great. Also, yeah. another thing. <clears throat> Did you guys notice that, like, Sam and Steve, when they were in Vienna, like, literally had, like, the exact same, like, incognito outfit, just different color schemes, like, same cap, same t-shirt, oh. same jacket, just different color schemes. I didn't even think like, about Steve that. Steve is blue and Sam is red. It's like, damn, guys. You should be in a boy band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys want to talk about soundtrack? Dude, it slaps, guys. Yeah, dude. Dude, it's like the whole... God dang it. The whole final fight music, bro. Like, the music brings it up to 11 for that final fight. Because it's like... And it, it climaxes right at, and in the comic book shot. Like, that's when it climaxes. Dude. Oh, my it's gosh. Just, mm-hmm. The music is super, super, super good. Yeah. And there's, like, so many, like... I remember that at the beginning, it's, you know, very much like, you know, drum rolls and everything. And then there's that one shot of um, right before it goes to Winter Soldier. And we get just a little, you know, like little, I can't remember there's a soundtrack right in my head. But uh, it was very much, uh, it was You didn't the, catch that, everybody. That was, do 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 It was the Winter Soldier's theme, like just like little, it's just hinted at it, you know, at the very beginning. Yeah, just the motif. Yeah. There's... There's so much, so much good and with this soundtrack. Um, even I've realized that some of them was uh, the Avengers theme song altered as well. It was like yeah, more Captain stars. America in the remember. Avengers. <clears throat> Let me get the, uh, the list for what we're looking at. Um, so right now, oh, yeah, we've got Guardians at number one. Okay. And then we have... Um, Avengers at number two. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I lost my place. Uh, then we have Iron Man at number three, Iron Man 2, and then Winter Soldier. Okay, so is it above Iron Man 2? Because that's where I put it. It's either above or below Iron Man 2. I'm not sure where, but it's right there. It's still ACDC, so <laughs> I would put it below for me. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else in Iron Man 2 other than that. Let me see. Yeah. Man. That's difficult. 
is this one, you know, there isn't that banger like there is in Iron Man 2. Yeah. But it just drives every scene. It just elevates every mm-hmm. scene. The it's exactly what uh, a, like uh, a score should do for a movie. You know, it just elevates. Mm-hmm. It brings that um, that emotion out of every scene. But like there is something to be said that like it's not like the Avengers one where it's like you can remember the, the, the mm-hmm. melody. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, is it a buffer under Iron Man 2? I, I think it's under. I think it's yeah, under. Yeah. Just based on the I... feeling, like, I feel like there's just a bunch of scenes in Iron Man 2 where it's, like, freaking just hype. Yeah. I think you might be right. I think it might might go under Iron Man 2. Eric, what do you think? Yeah, that's where I, that's where I would say. Yeah. I think okay. we're all right there. Cool. Under Iron Man 2. So it's the new number five. <laughs> uh... Tom Hiddleston, you know? How did he do in this movie? Never know. Killed it, dude. <laughs> he used his invisibility a lot. Yeah, you know, didn't see him the whole time. He's like John Cena. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Ba-da-bum. laughs> his name is John Cena! Oh, God. I can't... First off... I can't stand John Cena. So <laughs> what? You didn't like Peacemaker then, huh? I never saw Peacemaker. Oh, okay, okay. It never really piqued my interest. So, Same. um, okay, let's rank the Captain America trilogy. We are at the end of the Captain America trilogy. I think it's real simple how this goes. Three, three, two, two one. one. <laughs> Yep. So and it's like exponential. Top. It's oh, exponential, yeah. Yeah. bro. It's but, like one is okay, and then two is like ten times better, and then three is somehow ten times better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's there's no doubt about it. It's it's crazy the the jump in quality and how important each one is. You know, the first one, yeah, it's important. The second one, really important. Then the third one's like, wow, this is an Avengers movie, you know? Yeah. It's, it's Avengers what, level. Yeah. This is an Avengers level threat. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so now that we have two trilogies, let's rank the trilogies against each other. Iron Man's trilogy. Rank, uh, Avengers. Oh, Avengers isn't over yet. I never mind. I forgot. I was... Yeah. Er- Iron Man. We have the Iron Man trilogy and the Captain America trilogy. I think it's real simple. I think Cap goes over Iron Man for yeah. sure. No doubt about it. It does. I mean, Iron Man 1 is just so good, but then you have Captain America, Winter Soldier, and Civil War, which are better than two and Iron three. Man 2 and 3, you yeah. know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Even if uh, Civil War was at the same level as um, Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier, it would still go over Iron Man, I think. Yeah. Just because 2 and 3 are just very... Not bad, but like nothing really. They're middle of the road. Yeah, n- nothing really amazing happens. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Agreed. Okay, so what after credits scene do you guys want to rank? Um, the after credit scenes are Wakanda. Wakanda. And what's the other one? Uh, and then it's Spider Man with a little light. Oh, let's, we'll do. I think we should do Wakanda, but yeah. Do they show Wakanda? It's all like cloudy, right? We yeah, they don't. No, they, 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 yeah, they show the a little bit of foliage and the panther. Yeah, yeah, foliage and, and waterfall. Like waterfall. waterfall. Yeah. yeah, waterfall. Waterfall. When they also show that, like, man, they got like future tech in mm-hmm. Wakanda. Yeah, in Wakanda. Gotta gotta say it like that every time now. Wakanda. Oh, Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> A land so great and free. (laughs) But we can't seem to find it because it's hidden by trees. (laughs) Uh, Wow. Okay. Uh, The current uh, after credit scene. Should I do top half, bottom half? Top half, right? I don't know. I think middle half. half. Middle half? I don't know. (laughs) Okay. We have uh, number one. 
Number one is Avengers, Thanos. Number two is Ultron, Thanos grabbing the gauntlet. Number three is Ant-Man, where we see Falcon and Captain America, which is this movie. Uh, Number four is Winter Soldier, where we see the twins. And number five is Thor, where we see Loki um, manipulating everybody with the Tesseract. I think it's somewhere on the bottom right there. I think it's equivalent to like Loki and uh, and um, Ant Man. I think. Yeah, somewhere in there. Is it? Oh. I think it goes under the twins. So under number four. Yeah, because like so just above know. Loki. What? Yeah, because like when I watch, you know, like the after credits for Civil War or for Winter Soldier, for Ant-Man, it's like, oh my God, what is that? Like, what's happening? I need, I need to know. Like, what, what won't Tony believe? And with this, it's like, okay. So yeah, that's like, where Bucky's going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with that. And he must have not been in the ice very long. Like, what would that have been? Like a few months, maybe, before he came out and they're like, okay. We I figured have... it out. We well, how cured long... cancer. <laughs> how long is freaking a civil war to uh, infinity war? I do not know. Let's look it up real quick. Like end to beginning. Um, it's only like a year or two, right? He might have been in there almost a year. Approximately two years. Yeah. So he's probably in there like a year and then recovered for a year. It's probably something like that. Maybe, maybe even less. He might have only recovered for like six months. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. So, um, it is Zianu Nyambea five. Oh, yes. It's it's ranking five quite a bit. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The last few. Okay, gentlemen, it's that time. Where are we ranking? Oh, no, nope, no, it's not that time. I keep forgetting. Eric, where are Eric, where yeah. you ranking uh, Civil War in the MCU? Uh, your top half list. Or do you need it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Go ahead. No, is number one, Avengers. Two, Guardians. Three, Iron Man. Number four, Winter Soldier. And number five, Age of Ultron. Four. So under it's Iron going Man, under Iron Man, Iron above Man. Winter really? Soldier. This wasn't enough to get over Iron Man. Iron Man, man is man, man, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I I just love that movie so much. I know. I mean, I get it. It's a phenomenal movie, all and right. it's all Downey. It's all Downey. Which <laughs> man, I could watch. It's he's so Downey soft. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how has he not made that sponsorship yet? How has he right? not made that happen? What's he doing? That's just printing money, bro. Honestly, honestly, yeah. Does he need it anymore, really? No, no. Of course he no, no. It's for the clout. <laughs> that will only make people like him more. Of course, yeah. Okay. Now, it is time to rank Civil War in the MCU. The current list is... We, we don't need it, Winston. I say it every time. Whole list. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But just so you guys know. Number one, Winter Soldier. Number two, Avengers. Number three, Iron Man. Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy. Number five, Ant-Man. Number six, Age of Ultron. Number seven, Captain America. Number eight, Iron Man 2. Number nine, Iron Man 3. Number 10, Thor, and way down at the bottom is Thor the Dark World, and lastly, the Incredible Hulk. Now, tell me, gentlemen, where are we ranking I think, Civil War? I think it's right above Thor the Dark World. It's like, right <laughs> it's like yeah. Uh, it oh, man, it's number one, dude. Dude, it's, one, it's too it's good. It's number one. It's too good, bro. It's number one. It's too dang good, man. I was, I was hoping you weren't going to uh, disagree with me, Nate, with your love for Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. But no, as yeah, dude. After after the the final fight for Civil War has just you know the vintage has aged and improved over the years, and it's just the best. It's the best, bro. It's this film. It's got everything, dude. It's got everything. It's got a good theme. It's got enough, you know, like 
for, for you to think about. It's not, it's not going to hit you over the head with, you know, what you need to think about. And just like the action, the visuals, the acting, uh, acting, just like, and then just the hype, bro. It's like, it's a 10. It's like one of those 10 movies, dude. It's like, it did everything right. And it has the X factor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got that X factor with Spider-Man. It's just like, it's just so good. Like to me, this is a, uh, this is like a, like landmark film, like a film in time. It's like, um, who I think Winston said it in one of his marvelous facts. You know, it's like the uh, episode three for Star Wars. Although episode, so yeah, it's just like that culture. It like for me, it's like a cultural impact. And again, dude, they they did it again. Even more characters than Avengers, and it's even better somehow. Yep, doesn't make sense. The Russos have a deal with the devil. <laughs> Eric, it, it's such they, they had to sell both of their souls for these movies. Like <laughs> that's, that's why they have to worked. direct together. <laughs> that's why the films are so good because they sold both of them. Eric, what, what do you, what did you think? Like did, on our where, current yeah. list, like on our current list, would you have ranked it number one? Doesn't matter, but where do you have ranked it number one? Um, well, according to my list, no, no, I know, but. So you would still put it, because your number one is Avengers, you know? Yeah. Our number two is Avengers. So would you put it under Winter Soldier then? Would you put it under Iron Man, which is what, like fifth? Fourth. Yeah, so you'd put it fifth? You guys have Winter Soldier above that, though. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only difference between our list and your list other than maybe the exact positioning is that we have winter soldier in like the top yeah. top four. And I don't think you do. Mm, yeah, I did. I think well, it yeah, just until this. Yeah. 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 So I like, there's a reason why after coming out of the theater for this movie, I was like, this is my favorite MCU movie. Like immediately I was like, nope, this is it. This is the pinnacle for me. Um, this is like the, the time where everything changed. Like I said before, it's like, it's where you can feel like the MCU can do anything. That's this movie. And it's just like, it's so powerful. It's so great. In like so many different ways. They get like, they get the full confidence after this. Like oh, even yeah. if you make a bad movie, I'm not worried about it. Because I know at some point you'll make another phenomenal movie. Yep. Yep. And it's honestly, this is like the time where like props to Kevin Feige, where he's directed or, or he's produced, what did that be? 13 movies in order and they all connect to each other and none of them are garbage. None of them, you know? Well, cool. <laughs> and he did produce that too, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> It's, it's not garbage you know you know you know it's it's not a great it's, movie, cl it's close it's, it is close like i don't want to watch that movie but then there's masterpieces you know yeah and we're not we're not through like it yeah. gets better which is crazy somehow and like that's where you know the russo brothers because of this movie they became very well known they were already known after winter soldier but now they're like, oh, also stamp, you know, these like, are gr good directors, really good directors. Launching careers, you know, because like oh, yeah. the stunt double that they hired for Captain and for Chris Evans, like he, that guy's a director now. And it's because of, you know, the help that the Russos did to launch, launch his career. Oh, you know what? I just remembered that I wanted to shout out that I kind of wish that they would have kept a character around that they killed off was uh, Crossbones. Mm. Yeah, from the beginning, because that is a that's a really cool character, and uh, I feel like he had a lot of more a lot more p potential, mm. and they kind of just they didn't yeah. flush that out. They they could have done a lot more with that. Sure, yeah. Um, and right before we uh, sign off, I'm going to do the last two marvelous facts. Um, do it. 
I forgot to do it before we ranked. Uh, the day before filming a fight scene with Robert Downey Jr., Sebastian Stan sent him a video of himself doing intense bicep curls in front of the decapitated head of an Iron Man suit. He attached the message, looking forward to our scene tomorrow, Robert. <laughs> what a psycho. Awesome. I also, wonder if we can find that picture somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to um, just the production company taking Sebastian Stan to Romania in, in Bucharest, mm-hmm. his, home, his home country. Yep. That's why he speaks Romanian perfectly, because he is Romanian. Um, and the last one is uh, the wife of the co-director, Anthony Russo, provided the voice of Helmut Zemo's wife in the message box on Zemo's phone. I thought it was a little nice. interesting nod. I thought it was very interesting that after he finished his job of destroying the Avengers, he deletes the message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. he's uh, He seems like a very objective-based person, you know? Very analytical, very objective-based. So he's like, I did it. I'm done. I'm letting this go, you know? He was holding on to it for so long, trying, and then that was his motivation to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then when he did it, he's like, all right, I'm letting go. Which is interesting. It's it says a lot about his character. You know? He's also like the most relatable villain. The most relatable villain of all the villains that we've had. So it's far, like, yeah. yeah. If I had lost my, my wife, child, and father mm-hmm. the way that I did, and there's that, I'd, I'd be pissed. There's that one line where he's like, is this about Sokovia? And he's like, no. You know, uh, it was you a know government's fall long and everything. before the Avengers came. Yeah. And he's like, it's not about Sokovia. It's about my family. This is personal. This isn't uh, some obligation to my country or anything like that. So, yeah, very well done. Very well done. And it's bad, better than that, though, because it, it is about his family, but it is also about ideals as well uh-huh. because he is against super soldiers. Yeah, dude, he's just one of those principled villains yes. where it's just like he could be an anti-hero in, 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 if it's a different story. For sure. For sure. Oh, well, yeah. I- like you know like he's dude this guy is one step away from being butcher in the boys yeah one step closer to the edge he's about to break (laughs) uh okay well thank you all for joining us Uh, um of course if you know uh somebody who uh you know, tries to take down the avengers make sure that they go into the comments and they leave that message yeah why, why don't you try and just tell our channel to somebody that has ever been disappointed in their government? You know, wow. A, a, anybody that at any moment in time has been like, man, I'm, I wish my government didn't do that. It's like, hey, why don't you check these guys out? You know, they, uh, it, you know, they got. Hey, we just got the Secret Service following us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, there's like 10 people that watch this. <laughs> the odds of that are like. True, man. We've been getting more and more lately, actually. Yeah, it's so it's true. We've been nice. grinding. I, I think nice we're. I think we're averaging like one subscriber every two weeks. <laughs> hey, dude. So, something going up is progress, right? Yeah. Right. No, it's great, uh, dude. I love it. But and um, sh- uh, hold on tight. There may be a website for extra mm-hmm. exclusive content. We shall see. Uh. Eric, what is the next movie in the MCU that we will be revisiting? The next movie that we will be revisiting is... Doctor Strange! 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 Right before Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. So it's going to be weird watching right that. After. Watching Multiverse of Madness and then going back to watch Doctor Strange. But we'll see how much he's evolved. Yes, yes. I think it's interesting that Spider-Man had three movies in the space between Doctor Strange having yeah, two. That is, that is true. Yeah. MCU had their, they had their priorities right. I think it also has something to do with Sony, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you for watching, uh, and we will see you next time. Have a marvelous day. Chonky one.
stay. If you watch this whole thing, goddamn, get a like. <laughs>